If you're a Harry Potter fan who's only seen the movies but never read the books, you're missing about one third of the story. Subplots, characters, and really stinking cool scenes that add depth to both the Wizarding World and characters are quite often lost in translation. On the flip side, the movie adaptations have given us some scenes full of emotions that aren't there in the books. I'm Mike with List 25, and while every crazy book fan has their own list of things that got cut, here's our list of 25 crazy differences between the Harry Potter movies and books. Twenty-five. Nearly Headless Nick's Death Day Party is Missing from the Movie In the first book, the Gryffindor ghost invites the trio, Hermione, Harry, and Ron, to his Death Day Party. It's completely dropped from the films for time, but it would have been very cool to see. Twenty-four. Where the heck was Winky? The Crouch House Elf was really important in the fourth book, and then again in later parts of the story. She was just kind of glossed over. We barely got Creature. Dobby wasn't the only important house elf. 23. The most amusing game of Quidditch in the entire series is only found in the book. Luna Lovegood is amazing for a few reasons, but book fans will not soon forget the Quidditch game she announces in Half-Blood Prince. She explains such important things like Loser's Lurgy without all the dull scoring and things. 22. Peter Pettigrew lives in the movie. Um, what? In the book, Pettigrew's silver hand, given to him by the Dark Lord upon his resurrection, turns on him and strangles him to death. This doesn't happen in the movie. 21. The start of the first movie is much different from the book. Harry Potter and the Sorcerers, or Philosophers, Stone actually starts out with Vernon Dursley going to work and going about his day, noticing weird people in cloaks. The movie skips the entire first chapter of the first book, where people all across the country are meeting in secret and raising glasses to Harry Potter, the boy who lived. 20. Professor Snape's potion puzzle is omitted from the movie. In Sorcerer's Stone, there are various challenges to get to the stone. Most people know about the keys and the chessboard. But Hermione solving Snape's potion riddle was amazing, and it was completely cut for time. Danger lies before you, while safety lies behind. Two of us will help you, whichever you would find. One among us seven will let you move ahead. Another will transport the drinker back instead. Two among our number only hold metal wine. Three of us are killers, waiting hidden in line. Choose unless you wish to stay here forevermore. To help you in your choice, we give you these clues for... First, however slightly the poison tries to hide, you will always find some on Nettle Wine's left side. Second, different are those who stand at either end, but if you would move onwards, neither is your friend. Third, as you see clearly, are all different size. Neither dwarf nor giant holds death in their insides. Fourth, the second left and the second on the right are twins once you taste them, though different at first sight. It would have been amazingly cool to see this on film. 19. Rita Skeeter is an unregistered beetle animagus. That's how she got all the scoops during the Triwizard Tournament. She snuck onto Hogwarts grounds as a beetle and hid in people's hair. At the end of the fourth year, Hermione put her in an unbreakable jar where she kept her for a year until she promised not to write nasty things about them anymore. 18. Hermione also founded Spew. That's the Society for the Promotion of Elfish Welfare to you muggles, or nomadges. For reasons that are probably something boring like time constraints, Spew and the amusing scenes that happen surrounding it were cut. Or wait, maybe it's because they cut most of the house elves and their importance from the movies, too. Yeah, maybe it's that. 17. Harry's eyes are green, not blue. In fact, it's pretty darn important that Harry has Lily Evans' eyes, and she's a green-eyed redhead. His eyes should have been green, especially since the technology existed to color them green when the first movie came out. 16. Since the filmmakers didn't feel the need to explain who the Half-Blood Prince was in the sixth film, allow me. Snape was the Half-Blood Prince. The potions textbook with all the helpful hints that makes Harry good at potions belonged to a young Severus Snape, who was a half-blood. Snape, whose magical mother's maiden name was Prince, 
Snape, whose muggle father was an abusive jerk. Snape, who really felt acceptance for the first time in his life with Harry's mother, Lily Evans. Snape is the half-blood prince. And if not for young Snape saying stupid teenage crap, as stupid teenagers do, Harry Potter would likely have been Harry Snape. 15. In the books, the trio uses the invisibility cloak all the time. It's almost, almost, their deus ex machina. It's used a lot less frequently in the film, particularly in later films. It also looks completely different in the books, where it's described as being made from a silver, fluid-like material. 14. In the book, Harry doesn't snap the Elder Wand. He uses it to repair his own broken wand with Fox's feather as its core, and then returns it to Dumbledore's tomb. Since Harry is the last true master of the Elder Wand, if Harry dies a natural death, as in not dying by being defeated by another, the power of the Elder Wand will die with him. 13. Time travel in the movies is... well... Time travel doesn't work that way! You cannot interact with your past self. That includes throwing rocks at your own past head. While time travel in the books is clumsy at best, let's not talk about that play... thing. It's abysmal in the movies. No, they didn't throw rocks at themselves. They only observed their past-slash-future selves. Oi. 12. Aunt Petunia's hair is supposed to be blonde. And she's supposed to have, quote, nearly twice the usual amount of neck. How can you not get the hair color correct? 11. You know the Marauder's map? That cool map Harry has that was from Mooney, Wormtail, Padfoot, and Prongs? Yeah, the Marauders were Remus Lupin, Mooney the Werewolf, Sirius Black, Padfoot, Black Dog, Animagus, Peter Pettigrew, Wormtail, Rat, Animagus, and Harry's dad, James Potter, Prongs, Stag, Animagus. The four were best friends at Hogwarts, and while Lupin couldn't help being a werewolf, the other three trained themselves to be unregistered Animagi to help him deal with his condition. That's kind of completely glossed over in the films, but it's pretty important since Wormtail, who was secretly working for the Dark Lord, was the Potter's secret keeper and the reason why Voldemort could find James and Lily on the night he killed them. Everyone in the Order thought it was serious, which is why so many, including Lupin, believed his guilt for so long. Wormtail is just awful, guys. He's just scummy scum. 10. Tom Riddle's backstory was cut pretty short in movie 6. For instance, they cut his mom, Marope Gaunt, in movie 6, and his grandfather, Marvolo Gaunt, who was a jerk. Marope's story matters. She wouldn't stay alive for her child. Voldemort literally never knew his mother's love, not for a moment. Marope refused to raise her wand even to save her own life. She wouldn't even stay alive for her son. Dumbledore raised his eyebrows. Could you possibly be feeling sorry for Lord Voldemort? No, said Harry quickly. But she had a choice, didn't she? Not like my mother. Your mother had a choice too, said Dumbledore gently. Yes, Marope Riddle chose death in spite of a son who needed her. But do not judge her too harshly, Harry. She was greatly weakened by long suffering and never had your mother's courage. 9. They also gently gloss over the fact that Tom Riddle's family is inbred. Like really inbred, on the wizard side. Much like royals, it keeps the blood pure. Since they were directly descended from Salazar Slytherin himself, the Gaunt's family tree didn't, uh, branch out much. 8. As a weird change in the movies, when the Death Eaters and the Dark Lord die, they explode or flake away like non-glittery vampires. The books were pretty explicit. The bodies of the Death Eaters and the Dark Lord were placed in a room separate from everyone else. 7. That whole beautiful, magical dance scene between Harry and Hermione in the tent in Deathly Hallows Part 1? Where they're both so sad and the Horcrux is getting to them so they have their little radio playing? Harry just takes the Horcrux off Hermione, and if you've ever had a BFF of the opposite sex who's your ride or die, you totally just got that scene and it made you cry a little. This scene didn't happen in the books. Still, it was a lovely choice for the films. 6. Harry and Ginny's first kiss is completely different. 
In the books, Ginny runs to his arms in the common room and they kiss in front of everyone. It's passionate. It's giving no cares who's watching. It's bold. It says a lot about Ginny as a character and a partner to Harry. The movies basically neutered this awesome scene and hid them in the attic. It was a completely different feel. This Ginny is not the Ginny the book fans were expecting. Actually, Ginny in the books is a bazillion times more spunky and full of moxie than movie Ginny, which is disappointing. 5. In the books, we don't actually see Hermione obliviate her parents. We see her emotionally tell the boys about it. The movie actually shows us her casting the spell. That's kind of the opposite of how it usually goes. However, it still makes for a pretty powerful scene that helps set the tone of the film. 4. Dudley's goodbye is quite different as well. When Harry says his final goodbyes to the awful family that raised him, we see a moment of remorse for Dudley, that perhaps he too was a product of his terrible, no good, very bad parents. He shakes Harry's hand and wishes him luck. The movies denied us this moment, and any nuance of character development for Dudley Dursley. 3. Peeves the Poltergeist was actually cast and filmed for Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Sadly, he got cut in editing, and was therefore removed from the rest of the films. Not only is Peeves responsible for really amusing and charming moments, such as when McGonagall explains that it unscrews the other way, he's as old as Hogwarts itself. It's like they just left out part of the castle. 2. Neville could have been the Chosen One. Okay, so in the movies, Neville turns out pretty hot and pretty kick butt, but it's really glossed over how Voldemort's choice to mark Harry is what makes Harry the Chosen One in the prophecy. The prophecy applies equally to Neville, born as the seventh month closes to the parents who had defied Voldemort three times, until Voldy makes his choice on that fateful Halloween. 1. Dumbledore's reaction to Harry's name in the Goblet of Fire. Harry, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? roughly shakes 14-year-old's shoulders, is not at all like in the books. In fact, Dumbledore is pretty darn calm in that entire scene, because that's kind of his thing. Did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire, Harry? Dumbledore asked calmly. It's what the book says. It's kind of important, because A, it shows that Dumbledore is treating his student with respect instead of accusation, unlike movie Dumbledore. And B, it's implied that possibly Dumbledore was trying to read Harry's mind to find the truth, Dumbledore was known to use the art of legitimacy. But hey, let's just yell at the kid and shake him up a bit despite that being completely out of character for Dumbledore. So, what's your favorite differences between the books and the movies? Let us know in the comments below. <sighs> Alright, another Harry Potter list, done and done. not as exciting as the last one, but I hope everyone will like it. The books were neat, and so were the movies. I honestly don't know why we can't just like both. It is though, Tristan. The audience spoke and you lost. Floppy Bacon is the clear winner. But a clear winner between us hasn't been decided.
management is not going to be happy about this. I'm getting evicted. Awesome. <laughs> you still can't even figure out if you're eagles or ravens. All right, Tristan. It's time to finish this the way we started it. Together! It's over, Tristan. I have the high ground. You underestimate my- oh, forget it. It's the wrong franchise anyways. <laughs> Days of hosting List 25 are over, Mike. With you out of the way, I'll take over, and the channel will enter a new era of nerdy jokes and crispy bacon. What was supposed to happen? I'm not sure. Pretty sure I screwed up. Oh well, nothing a simple killing curse can't fix. You'll never take this channel from me. You know why? So I'm Mike with List 25. And I don't need 25 reasons to kick your- You can't say that, Mike! Okay, thank you.
I don't, I don't think there's some. You, you gotta do like this. All right, we're I'm rolling. God. We're rolling. <laughs> we we gotta get it behind it. Yeah. <laughs> now this time, aim at the floor so you see that this is how we disappear. That's his trick. Okay, let me do the <laughs> like the like, like, there you go. go. <coughs> God, don't edit this at all. Rolling. There's a duck. <laughs> Actually, this will work. This will work. Rolling. All right. Ow! Okay. And action. Oh! Holy shit. Are you okay? Are you okay? Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. Ready? <laughs> oh, shh! Shh! Yeah, he died. <laughs> Oh man. What you don't know is my computer sent you and it now has the wand. <laughs> You're <laughs> Okay, yeah, you don't have to actually have to be on the ground because I can't see you. No, I want it to be good, like the right angle, that's why I'm doing okay. it. So wrong. Really. <laughs> this is it's definitely gonna be in the action. bloopers. <laughs> Ready? Yep. That works. Rolling. Please tell me you caught that. Action. Oh, I sound like I'm doing a Kamehameha wave. <laughs> Kamehameha! Still rolling? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm trying to get in. What? Oh, what you doing? I'm trying to get in. I'm trying to break down the force field. Action! What? <laughs> Jesus, I thought you were about to throw it. I'm like, <laughs> I only saw the corner of my eye. I'm like, this is gonna hurt. We need an arm strap for that, right? <laughs> Rolling. If this collapses, uh, can I sue people? Now you've just uh, teleported, so like start right here and like rise well, up. I'm gonna do it. I'm just saying, I'm not happy about it. If this cracks in the middle... <laughs> never been more nervous to do a stupid jump in my life. Oh good, people. <laughs> Alright. I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this. Let's do, it, let's do it one more time. I, I almost got it, but it looks cool. <laughs> you didn't hear yourself in the beginning, you went, mm. <laughs> Like you're trying so hard to not make the sound effects yourself. I can imagine that's pretty tired. Alright, are we rolling? Yep. I'm looking away. I'm looking Thanks. Head. I appreciate it. Although I can still hear everything. Well. <laughs> God, this is the worst. Uh huh. God, this looks so stupid. <laughs> you can hear it still, can't you? You go. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot a part too. So. <laughs> That's right. All right. Here. Try the audio. <laughs> Don't try the audio. Oh, 
Haha, <laughs> this is cringe worthy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did he do it again? <laughs> that was just so loud. I didn't expect it to be so loud. That's oh, a little loud. Oh, By the way, there are people now. Alright. They're coming, they've opened their window, this is great. Okay. <laughs> that works. That's all I got. He told me nothing but to look at the light. Clean plate, clean plate. Dirty plate, dirty plate, dirty plate, dirty plate. Stop yelling at me. Clean! Wee plate! What? More clean plate. We have enough. Enjoying our lists? Be sure to click that subscribe button in the bottom right so you don't miss out on new ones every Monday through Friday. Share them with your friends and help us consistently conciliate curiosity. And if you want even more lists, check out these three videos here or just head to our website at list25.com.